Jordan, how are you? I'm doing really good. How are you? I am well. I appreciate you uh, talking to me about the show, especially now it feels like somebody won't hurt me for, you know, because I don't, I, it won't be a, a spoiler anymore. <laughs> exactly. It won't be on you. Twitter has it for sure. Yeah, it was a little hard to talk about when it started. So this is better. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm curious. I mean, now that the series has been available for a little bit, what has most surprised you about the reaction to the show? What are people most responding to? Is there anything you're surprised they're responding to? Um, I've noticed that people have been um, responding to the soundtrack a lot which I completely agree with, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and it is such an important part because it like sets the, the mood and tone, you know, to have uh, music playing. So um, not that I was surprised, but um, I've been noticing a lot of that. Have you been seeing reactions to your character at all? I mean, I personally love the sister relationship on the show. So what, what are you seeing like as far as the storylines go? Yeah, I love seeing um, people being supportive and rooting for the sister um, relationship. I am also rooting for that for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird because I I don't know what I'm seeing. Like, I don't know if I, it's being tailored to me because I'm only seeing good stuff. Like maybe Twitter is protecting me or something, but I'm really only seeing good stuff. <laughs> When the opportunity to be a part of this became a possibility for you, what, what was your reaction? Had you been familiar with the original series? Are you somebody who is typically interested in reboots and re remakes and reimaginings? I mean, wh what was your reaction to it? Well, I typically really like teen dramas, like things like that. Like I was really into Pretty Little Liars and I watched Gossip Girl as well. Um, so I was, I was excited and I was down and, um, you know, as an auditioning actor, mostly you're just very down, <laughs> you know, like whatever it is, give it to me. But this was, this was unique and special in that um, I already knew that Emily Allen Lind was going to be a part of it. And we'd worked together previously on um, Sacred Lies. So it had that added element of just, you know, knowing someone on the cast and, just thinking that it'd be a really fun opportunity. What was the audition process like for this? Did you, when you auditioned for this, did you immediately have a good feeling about it? Are you someone who's always convinced you'll never get whatever it is? Um, I, as long as I'm in the audition mode, I am, I am getting this role. And then when you audition, you just forget about it. You just have to, you know, cause there's, you just gotta, send your energy elsewhere, but definitely like focusing all of my energy onto the positive outcome um, while it's like available. Uh, but it was a, it was an interesting auditioning process. I heard about um, the reboot from Emily. And so she was like, you need to audition. So kind of started that way. And it was about February and then I heard nothing. So I was like, oh, well, and then also the pandemic happened. Um, <laughs> And then in August, I was going for a screen test, which was actually just like a Zoom call with Cassandra, the casting director, which was crazy. I remember sweating because I closed all the doors in my room to like make sure that it's like looks good and quiet. And I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> At what point did you meet Whitney and, and how did you guys start to figure out the dynamic between your characters? Yeah, so Whitney is just such an incredible, wonderful human being. Um, I think I was maybe like the second last to get cast. So there was a lot, you know, she'd, been, she'd known that she was going to be in it from maybe like March or something. Um, so then when I got cast, she reached out to me immediately, like gave me her number and we had like a phone call, which was really nice. And it really felt immediate, just like the bond with her. She's actually from the place where I was born. So it, there was all of this kind of interesting um, stuff happening even before we got into the script. I read that you decided to shave your head when you were 18, which is a bold move at any time since it's one of those things where you just don't know the outcome until you actually do it, then it's sort of too late to go back. So yes. I, I also love that you still have that 
shaved head on this show. Did anyone ever suggest you for you to try anything else for the role or were you always clear that this is who this character is? No, I mean, I don't think that that they had intended for Julian to have a shaved head. I don't know that that was really like in the write up. Um, <laughs> and I was open to the idea, you know, um, in terms of doing acting, like I'm, I'm very open to, you know, creating what the character is supposed to be. So I was like, if you guys want me to wear a wig, like I could wear a wig, but they ended up going with leaving my hair shaved. And I was so excited about that because, you know, it was, I guess, kind of a risk when I did it, just like, you know, I it definitely got commented on a lot when, when I first shaved my head. I feel like the comments are less now because yeah. maybe I just have had it for so long that nobody cares, but um, you know, it can kind of be um, something that you're discouraged from doing. So maybe if someone can see me and know that they can do it, if that's what they want to do, then that's good. It also seems like one of those things that just inherently has a certain sense of confidence to it because it seems like it'd be really scary to do <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because maybe it's just hard for me to remember what I was feeling, but I think that when I decide something, I it's very like cut, you know? Um, and my hair was maybe about like that long when I shaved it. And I just don't remember feeling any trepidation or any, you know, like, I was like, this is what I'm doing. And that's, it's a hundred percent the right decision. <laughs> so for whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know why, because definitely it wasn't because people were encouraging me to do it. It's quite the opposite. <laughs> This character is someone who is very self-assured and confident and centered, especially when we meet her. Where did you find the inspiration for that? Is that so something that you find within yourself? Or is that something you had to find outside of yourself? I think that I had to kind of rework the way that my confidence works to channel it through Julian. Um, but I think it is kind of, the same thing essentially we have different outcomes because we believe different things I think um, but it's that idea that like you know what you want and you're gonna do it and it's not really about um, you know what other people are gonna say and so she's just kind of although she does get lost a little bit along the way you know yeah. Luna and Monet definitely have a lot to say <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that that's like the core of her character and where like a lot of her confidence stems from is that she's like really believes um, that she knows best. One of the things that, like I said, I find most interesting about this show is that sister relationship at the core and how it's constantly evolving. Yeah. What are you finding most interesting about that dynamic and, and how it has evolved since you started playing? So my favorite thing about it, um, which I think is, the truth about siblings and family and friends is that when those people are your people, no matter what happens, you like, you make it through kind of thing. So obviously we're literally only, what is it, four episodes in and Zoya and Julian have, do, have had to deal with some insane challenges in terms of like maintaining their relationship and their love for each other. And every time you see that love wins. Um, above all of the drama, above all of the misunderstandings. And I think that that's like a really exciting lesson, you know, and that's the thing that I love the most is that they, their love for each other is so resilient. And pretty early on, there's already a guy creating tension between them. So how do you feel about that weird kind of love triangle? Are you someone who was like, no, this shouldn't be happening because they're sisters? Do you think it's fun to play? <laughs> Um, I think it's really funny and interesting. Um, I feel like it is so bizarre to me because I just wouldn't even register people who were with my sisters as anything, you know, like that would be so far beyond like the realm of possibility. Um, so I do think it's interesting because, you know, Gossip Girl is this kind of heightened imaginative fantasy world and, you know, the stranger the storyline, the more drama you get. So 
I definitely think it is weird, but you know, I'm sure it happens. Yeah, and they're, they're also, you know, technically strangers. They they don't they didn't grow up as sisters. So it's well, and that's, exactly. That's the other thing. They're not they don't have what I think repels people from their siblings partners, you know, which is that deep rooted like connection. You know, they don't have that. So technically it is a little bit fair game. So yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> It, it's hard to know sometimes what Jillian's true motivations are with anything also because they do keep shifting. She seems genuine, but then it seems like she's manipulating everything and then she seems genuine again. So do you like keeping her unpredictable and unexpected in that way? Yeah, I do, because I think that it is kind of like um, an exaggeration of how people truly are. I don't think people necessarily oscillate quite as much as Julian does in terms of her like moral fixation. But I think that to a certain extent, like we do contradict ourselves as humans, you know, we can say, well, I'm against this. And then a certain situation happens and you're like, hang on, you know, so we are vast and multitudinous. And I think that, um, you know, Julian represents that in the ways that like people just contradict themselves and you may care about something and want the best for it but when something else happens all of a sudden that becomes second. We haven't really gotten too many details yet on their mother so are we going to learn more about who she was and and how that is going to continue to affect things for them? Yeah, definitely. The legacy of their mother um, is something that comes into play later in the season. Um, and I really hope that there will be more about it because she's a very interesting character. Um, you know, as everyone just saw in the uh, episode four, you know, she kind of ran out on my dad and me, you know, and if that isn't Gossip Girl worthy drama, I don't know what is. <laughs> One of the big moments in the show happened in the first episode with the fashion show what was that whole sequence like to shoot with everything going on the runway the incredible dress all of that stuff what was that like to do it was amazing and it felt real you know I've never oh I did walk in a fashion show one time anyway um it, it just it felt like I'm like I don't know what would be more real about this like there was cameras there's audience there's the catwalk um, when we do it, we did full passes of it. So you wait back, you wait backstage, everybody goes out. And then, um, you know, so I was like, this just feels like, re like a real fashion show. And there were real models. Those girls are not actors. They, they are, they're models who frequently work with Christopher John Rogers. So that was also really cool. Um, it was great though. You know, Karina Evans directed it in a very beautiful way. And um, at the end of it, because it was a very long day and I was wearing like Louboutins, something like this much of a heel, just yeah. walking back and forth constantly. Um, and at the end of it, you know, she, we all came out and everybody did like an applause because we, we were all there for a very long time. And it was nice to just have that finale moment where it's like, we did this and just everybody congratulate themselves. What was it like to also shoot the sequence at the party where Julian bullies Zoya with the video of her being bullied. I mean, that whole sequence is so impactful and emotional. How did it feel to shoot that scene and to have her have that realization that she is also being a bully herself? It was, uh, personally, it was very stressful for me. I love Whitney and like even in the imaginary world of like doing something mean to her just is so, I remember I was sitting there like eating my lunch and she was asking me something. And I literally just like broke my fork because I was just like, ah, you know, it was just like a lot, it was a lot. And um, I had to do it so many times. I had to say those things so many times and knowing that the intent of the first speech was to just like hurt her as much as possible. I was just like, oh God, it was awful. But you know, um, we do it. <laughs> yeah, and it seems so tricky to do that and still have it come back around and, and have her sort of redeem herself by the end of the episode. I mean, that's, that's a lot to do. <laughs> it's, it's a complete, yeah, it's a full 80. It's a full 180, you know, because it's like, 
Well, and then that's exactly the contradictory nature of Julian. Like, okay, all of a sudden she's a hundred percent, a thousand percent sure that she wants to absolutely destroy her sister. And then something else comes to light and it's like, oh, actually I'm a hundred percent, thousand percent gonna, you know, expose myself and save her in the course of like 10 minutes. So it's definitely a, you know, but she's young. And I think that maybe that's how those types of things happen when you're young. Like you really get convinced in one aspect and then you realize I might've been wrong about that. And so I feel like that that's what that moment was where she really thought that she was right to do what she was doing and then realized that it was really fucked up. <laughs> Can we also talk about that outfit you wear at that party, the sheer sparkly mesh dress? I mean, when, when you're wearing wardrobe like that, does it affect even how you carry yourself? Completely. I mean, I couldn't walk properly, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I couldn't really sit down in it because it hurt. Um, but yeah, I mean, it really just forces you, a lot of Julian's clothes and just like her character in general kind of makes me like hold myself differently and have different mannerisms, which is very fun and interesting. Like she's a very, you know, curated and crafted individual. Fashion was a huge part of the original series and it seems like it's also a pretty defining characteristic of this series. How do you feel about her wardrobe? Everything from, you know, how she styles her school uniform to everyday life to what she wears when she dresses up. Do you feel like there's one way to describe her style or is it more of a mix of things? Mm, I feel like it's definitely a mix of things. Um, I, one of the things would definitely be, you know, the thing that falls into the category of the diamond dress and like the shoulder pad cat suits, you know, there's like that vein, but then um, she also does some more like low key, maybe streetwear inspired, um, oversized androgynous vibe. And then she also does have that kind of like um, cutesy, like, tall boots, little mini skirt thing. So I feel like there's like three things happening and it's dependent on her mood or something. On set, does the cast of students and the cast of teachers stay separate even though you guys are all sort of approximately the same age or do you all hang out together? Um, we definitely hang out together if we're all on set together. The thing about it is that um, the teachers are always obviously going to have their scenes together a lot. So, um, you know, they'll be on, there on days that we aren't maybe, but if, if everybody's there at once, oh, we're all together for sure. Yeah. How does Julian feel about Gossip Girl? Does she care about finding out who Gossip Girl is? And what was your reaction to finding out how that was going to be set up for the show? Yeah, that was, that was so interesting. I mean, I guess for me, I felt like it was the right thing to do because you spent all of, um, you know, the first Gossip Girl trying to figure out who Gossip Girl is. And so I think that it would really made sense to kind of flip that on its head. And it's like, you know, from jump, you know, just really kind of, you know, making a distinction between each of the Gossip Girl eras. Um, and Julian, I feel like she hasn't gotten to the, point yet where she's wondering who Gossip Girl is. I feel like especially in this day and age, there's so many, um, you know, accounts and it's like nobody really knows who's it, who it is and you just kind of accept it as like, you know, living on the internet, right? So I don't know that she's started to think about that, but that is really interesting, you know, starting a plot line where it's like, wait a second, who is this? Like, I feel like everyone's just kind of accepting that it's some online troll but behind every online troll is a human, usually, yeah. unless it's a bot, I guess. <laughs> Do you get excited about the connections between the original series and this one? Do they, do those get pointed out to you ahead of time or do you just have to catch them when the script comes? Yeah, I mean, I, I catch them um, sometimes. And then a lot of the times I, I, I get it from online. I get it from Twitter. like. Um, there was a scene in the first episode where I take a scarf and put it around Zoya. And then there's a scene just like that with Blair and Serena and a thousand percent the cat or the writers and creators are doing that on purpose because 
it very much is like a union, you know, this is an extension in the next era. It's not um, taking Gossip Girl away from what it already was, you know? So I think leaving those Easter eggs for the fans of the original show is really fun. And I, I love it too. Yeah, it's definitely fun. And it's, I think it's a cool way to connect the two for the first season, because then you're not necessarily waiting for like any of the original cast to show back up so that you guys can definitely establish your characters and have your moment, but still, you know, pay homage to what came before. Definitely. Yeah. What can you say to, to tease what's still to come in the first season? What, what do you think are the biggest ways the audience will still be surprised by the show? I mean, by the, the story you're continuing to tell? I mean, every episode is just so, could be so contained in terms of like the entertainment value of everything that's going on, you know, the different plot lines and the events and just all of the extravagant drama. So it's, it's just, it's more of that, you know, every episode I feel like leaves you like <gasps> the whole time. So um, definitely a lot of that. And a tease about the next episode is that there will be a lot of costumes, which <laughs> is gonna be very fun. We also have seen Jillian looking for at least uh, some kind of romance in all the wrong places. So will she find anything more right for her? You know, it's definitely kind of still up in the air. I think that um, Julian, there's a lot going on in her life that causes her to focus a lot on herself. And that doesn't necessarily bode well for having like a deep intimate connection with someone as we saw with Obi, you know, he's like, oh, I, I don't even feel like I exist, exist to you. And, you know, that's kind of true where Julian's at, you know, she's just very focused on herself and like how to kind of create this online image. And uh, so, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's going to take her some time still to kind of deconstruct all of that. Yeah, it certainly seems like it's kind of challenging to have a genuine connection with someone when you don't even fully know who you are or the, you know, while that's changing and evolving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's very much that. Well, I appreciate you talking to me about the show and everything. I just, I think it's been so much fun. I didn't know what to expect from, you know, the return of the show and all of these new characters. And, and, and I think sending it around this, sister dynamic makes it really interesting. Yay. Well, I'm so glad that you're enjoying it and having fun. And it was absolutely lovely to talk to you. I love your setup back there. I'm like seeing a lot of posters <laughs> and cool stuff. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I, I love concerts and I'm, I'm a concert photographer and it's just been like, my heart has been so like sad without having any of that to do. So I try to at least keep the art up. I love that. Well, hey, fingers crossed for things coming back. Yeah, for sure. And thank you so much for this. I, I oh. love, if nothing else, I love watching it because the fashion is insane. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so that. much.